Let's get started with supervised learning regression. And we're gonna start with what is arguably one of the simplest problems in regression, but is going to lead to these very powerful sets of tools that will, you will see over and over and over again in this and many other fields. So let's start with the problem of fitting a line to a bunch of data points. First of all, why is this a regression problem? Think about this axis here, your x-axis, as the thing you measure. Uh, let's say you're trying to predict the stock market from how many tweets there are a day or from the temperature in a particular city, say in New York. And so the vertical axis is the value of the stock market and the horizontal axis is something you measure. And let's say we're going to assume for now that it's going to fit a linear um, uh, 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 model. Yeah. So the problem of re regression here is given a bunch of x and y values, what is the model? And I'm constraining myself now for the model to be a line, which is parameterized by a slope m, what's the slope of the line, and an intercept b, what is the, uh, the intercept along the vertical axis. Now, if the data is perfect, the way I've shown over here, where every single point satisfies y equals mx plus b, well, then you have a trivial problem. We know how to solve this. How do you solve it? Well, I take any two points, because they're all exactly the same, and I have a constraint system of linear equations. I have two constraints and two unknowns, and I just solve using your favorite technique, right? Pack them into a matrix, do the backward substitution, do whatever you did in high school to solve for these things. We know how to solve it. But data is never this clean. It never looks like this. At best, it's gonna look something like this, where you have some slop. The models are approximations to what the underlying physical mechanism is, and the relationship between whatever this axis is and whatever the vertical axis is. And so now, how do we do this? Well, I can't just take any two points, because if I take these two points over here, I'm gonna get this line. And if I take these two points, I'm gonna get this line, or this line, or this line, or this line. So I could take two points and fit a line to it, but it's nonsense. I'm not actually fitting the line to this. Intuitively, what do we want? Well, we want something like what I drew here. We sort of want a line that sort of goes through the, those data points, minimizing you know, essentially the distance to all the points so that nothing is too far away from it. I mean, that's sort of our intuition. And that's what we're gonna do, but we're obviously going to quantify that now. So in almost every regression, in fact, almost every optimization problem, you have to start with an objective that what you wanna minimize or maximize. And then the question is, well, I guess there's three parts. What's your model, linear model? And then what's your objective? How do you wanna minimize the parameters of the model? And then there's a, how do you do the optimization? Okay, and we're gonna see that pattern emerge over and over and over again as we talk about these various image understanding tools that we'll be going through over the next few weeks. So let's come up with an objective. So here is one, it's not the only one, it's not the right one, it's not the wrong one, but it is one that will lead to a very particular optimization technique. And then we will look at other objective functions, which will lead to other um, um, optimization techniques. So here's one. What if I want to minimize this vertical distance between the point and the line? It's not at all obvious why the vertical distance is better than the horizontal distance, but notice that these two um, axes are different. This is something presumably that I measure, I know what this is, and this is something I'm trying to predict. And so if I simply assume that the error is in the predictor because the model is not perfect, well then it might make sense to try to uh, put all, assume all the errors in this vertical dimension, not in the horizontal dimension, assuming that I know how to make these measurements. Now, maybe later on we don't want to assume that. We'll worry about that later on. But for now, let's think about what happens if we want to minimize this vertical distance, let me call it delta i, for the point x i y i. So here's a point x i y i um, right there. And the model with that slope and intercept here is here, and I wanna minimize that distance. In fact, I wanna minimize it for all the points, but let's just let's use just that one now. Well, first thing we wanna ask is, well, what's that distance? What is the distance between a point x, i, y, i, and the equation of the line, y, in the line, rather, y equals mx plus b? Well, let's see. This is at point x, sure. And so we, I have a one-dimensional problem now. I just need to know that distance. Well, what is the, where, where is the y? Well, yi, that's the point. Where should it be if it was on the line? 
well, the line has a slope of m and an intercept of b, so it should be at mxi plus b, where xi, of course, is just the parameter there. And so that distance here is yi minus mxi plus b, or mx plus, mxi plus b minus y. So there it is. I want to minimize that. Well, that's actually not quite right. I don't really want to minimize that because if I want to minimize something, then it means I want to make it as big negative number as possible. And frankly, I don't care if it's above or below the line, right? So if delta i is less than zero, well, I don't want to keep driving that to, to a negative number. Um, so in this case, for example, um, this is just as bad, this, this error is just as bad if the point was above. And so we don't really care if the delta is negative or positive, we just care what is the distance, the absolute value or the square of the distance. So instead of just computing the distance and having to worry about whether it's negative or positive, maybe we can square it. Now, why didn't I take the absolute value? That would have been, in some ways, the more obvious thing to do. And now we get into that relationship that I just told you about. Remember, every optimization, every uh, uh, supervised learning and unsupervised learning has three parts. What's the model? What's the objective? And how do you minimize it? And absolute value creates a mess for the optimization. There would have been nothing wrong with me saying I would like to minimize the absolute value of this distance, but it would have made my optimization that I'm about to do more difficult. So instead, I'm going to square it. And I'm going to square it because when I have quadratic error functions, they are easier to optimize, um, even though I've made a statement here that I'm going to penalize the error as the square of the distance, not just the absolute value of the distance. OK, so now we have an objective, which is to please minimize this vertical distance between each data point and the model. In this case, the model is just a line. Now, of course, we want to do that for all the points, right? Not just the one point. And so maybe now what I want to minimize is not just mxi plus b minus yi, but the sum of all those. Now, why the sum? Why not something else? Why not the product of them? Well, the product would be weird because if one of them was zero, then the whole thing would be zero. So the sum sort of makes sense. I want the average error of these things to basically be minimal. And the reason, by the way, I don't have to put a 1 over m here is since I'm going to minimize this, the overall scale of the thing doesn't matter. I'm just going to try to drive this as small as possible. So there's my objective. Um, given a model, a line for now, mx plus b, given a bunch of data points that sort of fit a line but don't quite, we are going to try to find the parameters m and b, the slope and the intercept, that minimize this objective. And I want to emphasize again that I've made choices here. And they were intentional choices. They not, may not be obvious choices. But here are the two choices I made. I chose to minimize the vertical distance between each point in the line. And I chose to square that error because I'm telling you that that's going to lead to a simpler optimization. Now, there are other ways of doing this, which we will be talking about as we go through these various different types of regression uh, techniques. But this leads to a particularly elegant uh, solution, which is why we've made those choices here. Now, I've done two of the three things I need to do. I specified a model. That's on you. Is it a line? Is it a parabola? Is it a cubic? Is it maybe are you in three dimension and you're trying to fit a plane or a parabolic surface? That's on you on what you want your model to be. Nobody can help you there when you're doing regression. You need a model with some model parameters. Once you pick your model parameters, one way of doing a regression, this is what so-called least squares uh, regression or least squares estimation, is to minimize the square dis vertical distance between the data points and your model. And what we have to do next, of course, is actually do that optimization, which we'll do when we come back.